Long-awaited federal legislation to speed up and simplify the process of getting a pardon for simple cannabis possession is now in force. Federal Justice Minister David Lametti made the announcement Thursday in Montreal. Under Bill C-93 tabled in March, people convicted of cannabis possession can apply online for a criminal pardon free of charge. The law eliminates the waiting process associated with other pardon applications and waives the $631 application fee. I'm very pleased to announce the coming into force today of Bill C-93, an act to provide no-cost expedited pardons for simple possession of cannabis. Starting today, people who have a criminal record only for simple possession of cannabis can apply for a free no-wait pardon using this expedited process. Make it, making it easier to work, go to school, travel, and actively participate in our communities. We think that there, are upward, there may be upwards of 250,000 people who have, in some way, shape, or form, some kind of uh, cannabis uh, possession uh, conviction. We're hoping, by expediting this process, to make the number of people who have access to, to the pardon reach into the thousands. Uh, but it will never get up to that point. Some of those people have died, etc. So th because the record keeping is non-uniform, we don't actually have the answer. This is what our best prediction is. The Canadian database, this CPIC, uh, won't show a criminal, uh, won't show that criminal conviction anymore. Uh, and so that's usually what uh, the American uh, border agents will be checking. Conservative leader Andrew Scheer is promising the premiers that he would increase health transfers and social transfer by at least 3% every year should he become Prime Minister. In a letter to provincial and territorial premier, Scheer says he wants to put the commitment in writing because he anticipates his opponents will misrepresent his position on health care funding. Scheer says millions of Canadians rely on a public health care system, including during life events, including the birth of a child, when caring for aging parents, for checkups and life-saving treatments. He also says Canadians count on education, social assistance, early learning, childcare and other programs supported by the Canada Social Transfer, adding that Canadians need to be able to count on stable and predictable federal funding. In a speech to Liberal candidates Wednesday, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau accused the Conservatives of claiming to be a party of the people but quickly turning to quotes, cuts to health care, municipalities, child care, education and services Canadians rely on most. A spokesperson for Shear says health is an issue that stretches across all provinces and territories, adding the Conservatives know the Trudeau Liberals will, quote, try and fearmonger. President Donald Trump intensified pressure on China to reach a trade deal by saying he will impose 10% tariffs September 1st on the remaining Chinese imports he hasn't already taxed. The move immediately sent stock prices sinking. But when my people came home, they said, we're talking, we have another meeting in early September. I said, that's fine. But in the meantime, until such time as there's a deal, we'll be taxing them. Would, no, I don't know. I think, I think President Xi, who's somebody I like a lot, I think he wants to make a deal. But frankly, he's not going fast enough. He said he was going to be buying from our farmers. He didn't do that. He said he was going to stop fentanyl from coming into our country. It's all coming out of China. He didn't do that. We're losing thousands of people to fentanyl. And this was time. No, no, no. It's September 1. The reason is it takes a long time for the ships to come over, and it's a period of time. So I'm giving a four, like a four-week period of time before the tariffs go on. And with the announcement of the new tariff, stocks slumped Thursday and bond prices spiked with word of a new 10% tariff on $300 billion worth of goods from China beginning next month. Investors got a shock today when they uh, heard about the new tariffs that the president plans to impose on Chinese goods. These are in addition to uh, other tariffs that are already in place. Uh, part of the reason that the markets were surprised was that they uh, had thought that the talks were going to continue uh, as of yesterday. And today, the president put out a series of tweets saying that these new tariffs would go into effect uh, next month. That's only uh, a couple of weeks from now. Well, uh, the goods that are now going to be targeted are ones that would affect uh, ordinary consumers, um, people, things that you might buy in the store, uh, scarves, like electronics. The previous goods were more uh, things that do not affect consumers directly. So now that we have new tariffs on a new set of goods that China's bringing in, that's when you're going to see a turn up in uh, retailers that need to bring in these goods, like, say, Best Buy. So they are facing 
higher costs if these tariffs go through and fewer profits. So that's why the stocks went down today. Yeah, if, if you look at a graph of what the stock market was doing during the day, it's, it's pretty clear when those tweets came out because it was going up steadily for most of the day and then they kind of went off a cliff right after the tweets came out. Uh, the market was actually on its way to its best day in about two months. Uh, that went away uh, immediately. Uh, the markets uh, are a little bit nervous about the trade war. They think that it could slow the economy, uh, hurt companies. Uh, the price of oil went down a lot. That's a signal that investors think that the economy could slow. The U.S. plans to test a new missile in the coming weeks that would have been prohibited under a landmark 32-year-old arms control treaty that the U.S. and Russia ripped up on Friday. Washington and Moscow walked out of the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty that President Ronald Reagan and Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev signed in 1987, raising fears of a new arms race. The U.S. said that for years, Moscow has been developing and fielding weapons that violate the treaty and threaten the United States and its allies, particularly in Europe. But the U.S. also sees an upside to exiting the treaty. Washington has complained for years that the arms control playing field was unfair. U.S. officials argued that not only was Russia violating the treaty and developing prohibited weapons, but that China also was making similar non-compliant weapons, leaving the U.S. alone in complying with the aging arms control pact. Now the U.S. is free to develop weapons systems that were previously banned. The U.S. is planning a test flight of such weapons in the coming weeks, according to senior administration official, who was not authorized to publicly discuss the weapons development and spoke only on the condition of anonymity. The current Pentagon budget includes $48 million for research on potential military responses to the Russian violations of the INF Treaty, but the options do not include a nuclear missile.